system is completely safe. As the landing gear is retracted in preparation for the test, everyone is aware they cannot afford to fail. In the cockpit, the system is primed. The problem persists, but at least the gear slips free sooner than last time. In flight, the airstream will probably shake the gear free sooner still. It's up to Gerard to decide if he's happy to accept the plane with the gear as it is. It's not marvelous, but uh, it is working, and at least even if the, 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 the left landing gear is not extended at the same time as the right one. Uh, yes, I think I will accept it. Yes. The team will continue to refine the system, but at least the plane can now be handed over to the test pilots. Fernando Alonso is taking the opportunity to look around the plane to check that nothing has been missed in the final push. Like always, at the end, there's a big rush. We'll get very excited. Uh, but if not, at some point in time you need to take a decision, okay, now stop, uh, it's over, and uh, we take it over, because otherwise it will just go on forever and ever. So. The plane has everything needed for the test to come, including these water tanks that will simulate the weight of hundreds of passengers. But in the rush to get ready, it appears that something's been overlooked. The cabin lights are not working. <laughs> cabin illumination is switched off. I don't know. No. So we have no possibility to switch the, the cabin illumination. I the, need the lights. The cabin lights are... Uh, we need to have them on. We have been having handover meetings for the past two weeks. Yeah. Nobody ever said that the cabin lighting was not working. Nobody ever mentioned the limitations. Nothing was said about lighting. So now we put on the, we put on the uh, breakers. If something burns, it will burn. With Fernando's words ringing in their ears, the engineers get to work, and in no time the lights are on. Immediately the mood changes, and the plane can be officially handed over. For Gérard Dubois, it's just like taking delivery of a new car. L'avion contre la voiture. On a une tradition en France, lorsqu'un, par exemple, un concessionnaire livre une voiture à son client, en général, il offre simultanément un bouquet de fleurs pour sa femme. Aujourd'hui, on a un magnifique bouquet de fleurs accroché sous l'avion. Ce sont des fleurs qui ont été cueillies ici, autour de l'avion. Voilà, tradition respectée à la française. The A380 is towed to the test flight department, leaving behind the factory where it was assembled. It's a journey of only a couple of miles, but it signifies the beginning of its new life as a flying test bed. Quite a crowd has turned out, and everyone wants to know how long it will be until the plane flies. Previous aircraft have taken about a fortnight, but Alonso won't be pinned down to a specific date just yet. I really do not want to be under the pressure of saying it's 10 days or 2 weeks. I, I, I don't know. It'll be when it'll be. Uh, and nobody is keener and more eager to fly than we are. So uh, I, think, I think you just have to rely that as soon as we feel that the airplane is ready, we will fly. In their time, these guys have test flown everything from airliners to jet fighters. But this is their biggest challenge. On previous programs, they have performed takeoffs with runways flooded with tons of water. They've deliberately scraped the fuselage along the ground during takeoffs, and they've flown aircraft to Siberia to test them at 50 degrees below zero. Plus, 
they've thrown passenger planes around the sky in the most extreme manoeuvres. It's a challenging but satisfying job. It's, it's something which is uh, rather demanding. It asks you to be at, at, at your best level permanently because you, you cannot, you cannot uh, uh, cheat. Uh, you, 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 you are really flying in real conditions and uh, it's, uh, it's something which is uh, stimulating. I would say. Within the next 12 months, Jack and his team will be pulling manoeuvres like this in the A380. But all that depends on getting the plane into the air. The first step is to get used to the aircraft, to make sure that they are familiar with all the systems and that everything is working. By April the 8th, the team are ready to test the engines. To start the engines, there's, there's one ignition, which is that one for the APU. That'll start engine number one. That'll start engine number two. That will start engine number three. And that'll start engine number four. With emergency crews on standby, the A380 can at last start to come to life. The sol pour deux. Prêt pour deux. Deux. Un. Top. Main ouverte. The smoke is caused by a protective layer of oil burning off as the engines are run one by one. Testing and monitoring the engines takes two long days, but now the aircraft can move under its own power for the first time. The next 10 days are spent on further detailed checks on the ground and the A380 becomes a familiar sight at Toulouse International Airport, taxiing up and down. Gradually the speed is increased and most importantly the brakes are tested. By the look of the tyres after the tests, the brakes are well up to the job. Confidence in the aircraft is growing every day. Uh, there's still some little things to be fixed, but uh, we're, in, we're getting closer. Every day we're closer. Each of the flight test team has a very specific job. And flight test engineer Jacques Joie's role is to monitor the engines. On the way back from one of the ground runs, Jackie thinks he may have spotted a serious problem. I saw it uh, while we were taxiing back from the... I saw it going? Yeah. No, no, I, I, I saw that there was a, a white spot that looked uh, suspicious. Okay. He suspects that something has gone into the engine, and there's a fear that whatever caused these white marks has damaged the six-ton, nine-million-pound power plant. Replacing the engine would almost certainly delay the first flight. Gerard Dubois arrives to give his expert opinion. It's bird shit. <laughs> that's the bird shit. Where did the bird go? <laughs> he was scared. He was really scared. Really, really, really scared. <laughs> Two days later comes a stark reminder of the dangers facing the test team. Jim Fawcett has to make sure they are familiar with all the safety kit on board, including an emergency escape chute should the unthinkable happen. So, we have an emergency evacuation system. This is 
fired by pyrotechnic handles in the cockpit and in the uh, flight test engineer station. Uh, they drive a firing door which is down the bottom of this tube here in the main cargo door. The crew can come and jump safely out through this door and with the aid of a parachute get down safely to the ground. After two weeks of hard work, 